In this video, we're going to talk to you guys about the difference between 2D and 3D space. We're going to assume that you guys have never worked in a 3D package and maybe aren't completely familiar with the idea of floating around and building things and animating things in a three-dimensional environment. That's right, and obviously as we set out to work with these 3D projects, we're going to be a lot of, you know, doing a lot of manipulating in 3D space, mm -hmm. but we're also going to work in orthogonal views, so we're going to be dealing with 2D space as well in a 3D environment or virtual world. So understanding the difference between the two become very important, especially since we're going to start throwing translation numbers at you and things like that. Right, so really all you need to get rolling here is a vague idea of 2D space as it pertains to like your old high school algebra class. So first let's start out with a discussion on 2D space. Sounds good. Well, so. first of all, what exactly is 2D space? Well, you know, it uses two directions or axes to designate a position. Two dimensions, now, if you will. Ooh. Yes. Now, what does that mean? It well, means that you're sort of confined to a flat plane, like your monitor or a piece of paper. That's right. You can go up the plane and down it, or you can go left and right, but you can't really step away from it. You are right. stuck in this two-dimensional place. Right. Think of, uh, you know, you have a bucket, if you will, of infinite dots. Okay. You're pulling a dot out of the bucket and putting on a piece of paper, and you could slide around on that piece of paper. Okay, interesting okay. analogy. Never yeah, yeah, I don't know where the bucket came from, but that's cool. <laughs> I dig it. Because you have an infinite number of points that you could put on this plane. That's so right. an infinite number of dots. Dot bucket. A uh, dot yeah. bucket. Let's talk about these two directions, though. Sounds good. So we first have the x-axis, and this is going to run horizontally, left and right, Grab on a your piece grid. of paper, draw a line from left to right, it's your x-axis. That's your x-axis. Right, that's a good point. The x-axis could actually be thought of as 1D. Mm -hmm. If you will. There you go. It's kind of like a number line that you learn when you were counting in first grade. Right. Yeah. Zero would be in the middle. Down the line. Yeah, right. you can go positive and then you can mm -hmm. go negative. And you could have like one or two or three, or you could have uh, in between those integers, like 1.5 or 1.7384. Okay. Right. Now there's a second direction, too. Yep. And that would be the y axis. Now this is your second dimension. Mm hmm. And we're having these two axes together allows you to basically slide around on your plane, you know, and you could basically have um, multiple points. Well, you okay. can also create shapes yeah. at this point, too, because before, in a one-dimensional area, if you're only working with the x-axis, for example, all you can really create is lines. Right. Because you only have that one, you have, like, length. Yeah, con confined to that single now that dimension. Now that we've added that second dimension, you have uh, length, and now you have width as well. So now you can draw things like squares or circles, and that's why you're able to plot out shapes and things on a two-dimensional graph. That's Not shapes and things, shapes. Well, I want to say things, too. Okay, <laughs> but shapes. <laughs> shapes. Flat things. Goodness. That's right. <laughs> Flat things. All right, so... Uh, the coordinates are always going to be listed x first, then y. So you're going to have uh, a coordinate such as 24 comma 8, which is going to be like it's going to be 24 in x and 8 in y. Right. Sort of like going horizontally and then going vertically. To That's right. Your point. Now here we have an example of a two-dimensional space diagram. You can really just think of it as a grid or a graph. Mm -hmm. Very very easy. Now you'll uh, see our x-axis running side to side and our y-axis running up and down. But notice something about the x and y axes. They have a positive direction and a negative direction. So we have a positive, of course, going up for y and then down for uh, down for negative, negative y. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. we have a x and. Uh, X going positive for right and negative for left. Right. Now you can plot points in each of the areas here using quadrants. Now uh, for you'll just take a look at the little letters that have popped up. We have four quadrants, of course, and they are centered around where the axes converge at a single point. Sure. So we have uh, the positive x y. We have positive x negative y. We have negative x negative y, and the negative x positive y. You can plot points in these guys just by uh, writing you know, numbers in. So we have mm -hmm. 6, 5, and you can actually see where that's plotted on the graph. And there's a few more points as well just to kind of give you an example. So just go ahead and boom. And there's another point at negative 15, mm -hmm. negative 10. So to get this, you'd actually count 15 units back on that red line. That's right. And then 10 units down on the green that's line. That's right. And then you have just got that exact position in 2D space. Very cool. So there's just a couple more points in the other quadrants just to kind of give you an example. And if you want, you can actually you know, sit there on your grid on and you the can count them off. And you can count them right, off. Right, exactly. And then finally, you have the origin, which is located right at the center of the grid. And that's going to be at 0, 0. So a value of 0 for x and a value of 0 for y as well. Well, makes sense. You're originating on your coordinates. That's right. Yeah. And you can draw shapes in here, too. So there's the, the <laughs> shape of a character actually drawn out in 2D space. And mm -hmm. he exists. He's there. He could move, dance, and whatnot. But he's still going to stay perfectly flat at right. all times. He, he has no shape. depth whatsoever. That's right. Now, that's a, a pretty basic understanding of two-dimensional space and some of the things you can do with it without getting into higher math. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at three-dimensional space now. Dun, dun, dun. So there you go. 3D space. Now, the 3D space... Uh, 
diag- oh, dias diagnostic we're going to give you <laughs> is pertinent only to 3DS Max, uh, right. only because the axes that we're going to be using, X, Y, and Z now, mm-hmm. the directions for those uh, don't always pertain to every single 3D package. So just remember that what we're going to show you pertains to Max and is not necessarily universal, though it's going to be pretty close. Sure, but it kind of makes sense because with, you know, with 2D you have X and Y on right. your flat plane, then Z is coming out of the page. That's right. So uh, we have 3D space now, which now has three directions instead of just two. We have X, mm-hmm. Y, and Z. So the X axis is going to run from left to right horizontally right, in your just scene. Like in 2D. And think about this in the real world. So instead of just thinking of like a sheet of paper now, now think about you. Like you're the center of the world, and then the X axis is going to run from your left arm to your right arm, like so. Sure. Now we go to the Y axis, which is going to run horizontally forward and backward. So it's going to go out your back and then right out your chest. Okay, that makes kinda, sense. It's kind of scary, I know. Sure. But don't worry, it's not <laughs> painful. And then uh, finally the Z axis runs vertically up and down. So from your toes straight out your head. And there you go. So now you actually have three-dimensional coordinates. You have length, you have width, and now you have depth as well. So you can now create three-dimensional volumes, three-dimensional objects in 3D space. Very cool. Now, the coordinates are going to be listed very similarly to 2D space, with X first, then Y, but now we add Z after that. So you'll see numbers like 23, comma, negative 5, comma, 7, and you can see so, a couple more examples there. There's even one with a decimal point, just to make things fancy for you. That's so, cool. So it's kind of like plotting points just like before. You're you know counting along one of the axes but you're just adding a third one. Well, it's, still, it's exactly the same thing. You'll mm-hmm. count out in X, then you'll count out in Y, and then you'll ca- actually count upwards in Z, mm-hmm. and then you have a true uh, actual point in 3D space as opposed to just two. Very cool. Now, this is an example of a three-dimensional space grid, and it looks a little bit confusing at first, but just take it one plane at a time. Like, across the bottom, you sure. can see the uh, the X and Y right. axes. Right, at the bottom is your original 2D graph that we were using before. But notice this. Notice I don't have any labels here. You right. don't actually see X, Y, or Z. We're using a color coding system, which you're actually going to find in 3DS Max as well, where the x-axis is going to be red, the y-axis is going to be green, and the z-axis will be blue. R, G, B equals X, Y, Z. Keep that in your head at all times, and get to the point where you can spot an axis just by looking at the color. Practice a little bit. It'll come real quick. Awesome. So uh, here is a character now in three-dimensional space. Note he's got a little bit of thickness now. Right. He's got a a shadow just to be fancy. But this is what it looks like to have an object floating in 3D space as opposed to 2. It really is coming out of the page at you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to be dealing with inside of 3DS Max. That's the heart of what we're doing. So uh, that's Very the cool. end of the slideshow. <laughs> so why don't we actually move over to Max right now, and we can actually see a little quick demonstra- demonstration of an object moving around in 3D space. Okay. We have a, uh, um, a point helper that we've created down here already. That's right. It's an object we're going to be talking right. about a little bit later. And you can actually see he's on a grid, and you mm-hmm. can actually kind of think of this grid as the 2D XY plane that we saw at the beginning of this video. Mm-hmm. You can slide around on that plane, but he's always moving only in X and Y, and you can actually look down here about how the X and Y core coordinates are counting up and down as you move across the quadrants. That's right. We're using that exact same coordinate system we were using before. Now, later on, guys, as we progress through this, we're going to be telling you a little bit more about the 3DS Max interface and exactly what's going on here. For now, don't worry about trying to click and follow along too much. We're going to be demonstrating all of this in a future video. Another thing I'd like to point out that I mentioned at the very beginning of this video is that when working in 3DS Max, you are going to be dealing, in a sense, with 2D and 3D because we do have these orthogonal views, which, if I can see the mouse real quick... But you're going to be, this is an orthogonal view right here, this mm-hmm. orthogonal view, this orthogonal view. Basically, this is like a 2D view. That's right. Mm-hmm. So if we were to, you know, create an object, let's say uh, maybe even a sphere, and don't worry about how we're going about doing this. We're going to talk about this in depth, obviously. But look over here in our 3D view. Mm-hmm. You can see, you know, it's shaded. It looks three-dimensional. Mm-hmm. But up here, it looks like a shape that's just simply drawn out. Right. That's right. And I'm really gl- uh, glad that you mentioned that because that brings home a really important point that you cannot forget. Even though we are working in a 3D package, 2D is going to play a major role. You're going to be constantly using those skills that you developed in 2D a long time ago back in algebra class. Sure. And then applying them in 3D as well. That's so right. don't ever forget. It's like because you're working in 3D, 2D is still vital to you. That's right. And then just to go back to our little locator real quickly, uh, as I pointed out the XY plane before, now again in 3D we have our Z coordinate as well. So we can actually go up up and down. Right. Right. And you you can can see that number changing changing down there. Very cool. So uh, with that, you should have a pretty good idea now of the differences between 2D and 3D space. You should have a good idea of the axes and how we can uh, plot different objects. You've even seen how we can create three-dimensional objects inside of a 3D space. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone.